Uh, hi, my name is Ted Knudsen. Welcome to the 2022 StatsBomb Conference. Um, they don't let me have a podcast these days. They're, in some cases, they're too afraid of what I'll say. In certain circumstances, I have been advised not to uh, you know, leak all of your secrets to, to the world, uh, especially for those of you who've been doing this for a little while. Uh, but I'm going to poke a little bit of fun at some of the people in the room um, just before we get started. You know, a little icebreaker, as you do. Um, so yeah, 2022, welcome back. Some of you out there produced two trophies and finished as runners-up in two other competitions. You may have produced the best single season that your team has ever seen, and yet the media and certain groups of the fans acted like you might have been a disappointment. And you know, I, I feel like you know, this might be slightly representative of, uh, of that situation. Others of you <clears throat> finished with another incredible 90 plus point season in the Premier League, which I think people are getting jaded about, despite the fact that it has almost never happened before. Um, you nearly, nearly finished a, at least in the finalists of the Champions League. But unfortunately, in addition to staking Real Madrid, you did not chop off the head, burn the body, and scatter the ashes. So, you know, another great season, but unfortunately seems like Real Madrid came out in the end. Um, I don't know if Michael Edwards is here. <laughs> but the thing is, I never know if Michael Edwards is here because he often comes in under a fake name. Um, there was rumors that Michael Edwards was staying uh, as part of his gap year, you know, when you're in between jobs uh, in a, a private, sorry, in a private uh, island owned by Todd Bowley. Uh, but uh, I heard on the Orange Science podcast recently that he was going to be kicked out for somebody who was actually looking to take the Chelsea job. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, if he's here and you see someone wearing the, or if you see someone wearing the badge of Fred Flintstone, they might not be who they say they are. Finally, uh, a different group that I think is also here uh, finished with the most incredible final day of their season. <clears throat> they, they won 7-0 uh, in order to leapfrog the competitors and be uh, in the automatic promotion places from their league. And even more incredibly, despite the fact that it was one of the, the most notable fan final day experiences of all time, no one, and I, I checked this yesterday, literally no one updated their Wikipedia page with that story. Uh, I say this because we have a number of fans of this team in StatsBomb, because they're, they're pretty local to us, and they didn't do it either. So I, I wanted to, to encourage them to uh, you know, fix their history, as it were. Anyway. Now that I have a, a handheld mic, uh, I think we'll, we'll move on. Hopefully none of you heard that. I'll stay out of trouble that way. All right, so before we get started, some housekeeping stuff. Um, first of all, there are a couple of changes to the itinerary uh, due to the recent natural events and travel chaos. Uh, venue screens are more up to date than the event guide, so the thing that is in your bag has already been outdated. Um, if the fire alarm goes off, it is not a test. Uh, follow the announcements, hopefully the the announcements will be clearer than the tannoys in most of your stadia. Also, contact de details in case of any issues are in the event guide. Uh, plenty of StatsBomb people uh, are, are here to help. So you know, if anything goes wrong, just let us know. We'll try and fix things. <laughs> right. So as I said, this is the third StatsBomb conference. And this kind of had a funny start. I had to fight my team in order to do the first one in 2019. Uh, it feels like we have upgraded our venue. Like This feels like in a gorgeous venue and a gorgeous stage. I wanted to say thank you so much to our events manager, Katie Slade. Uh, she's produced an awesome uh, you know, show in, in <laughs> incredibly challenging circumstances. Some of you out there, in fact, a lot of you out there, have been written off her Christmas list because of how late that you wanted to buy tickets. Next year, maybe go a little bit earlier to save the events people some, some stress. But I um, also wanted to say thank you to uh, Simon Benoob, who's our chief marketing officer, who oversees that. Like, this looks great. And, and hopefully, uh, aside from myself, the content will be really enjoyable. I um, wanted to thank our sponsors here. Uh, we've had a great group of sponsors and a lot of interest in this conference, uh, largely to see you guys, honestly. Uh, not very, very little to do with us, but they wanted to talk to you and have the opportunity to interact with you. Um, we founded this conference as I wanted to get people in a room and have them talk about you know, stuff that they were excited about, research they were excited about. And this is an industry that's been built uh, and growing based on getting smart people together. 
Um, you know, many of you have jobs because you're brilliant and you've proven it over and over again. Uh, sometimes we'll argue, but argumentation in the right way is just a way of distilling ideas and finding better paths. And, you know, one of the things that is important to us is to continue to have, you know, a relatively safe space to be able to have these conversations. Last year, on the media side, we had some complaints about media, you know, not only reporting directly of some of the very private talks that, that we've given. Uh, we, we get great speakers up here to talk about interesting stuff because, you know, we don't always televise uh, the talks. And, and some people at home are frustrated. It's not my choice, it's the teams. The teams will allow them to talk about cool stuff in a room uh, if it doesn't you know, necessarily go beyond that room. If you're media here, please be very circumspect in how you write about stuff. Broad strokes is probably okay, but if you're doing detailed you know, minute by minute updates of what somebody's talk is and it's not supposed to be out there, you're probably not coming back next year. If I know about it, I won't let you come. So I just wanted to, to make that clear. This is a, an industry conference. It is founded on having a good spot to talk about stuff. So just be a little careful about the, you know, be sensitive to, to the content. Um, also, we are committed to the development of the analytics industry. Obviously, it's, it's useful for our business. <laughs> but we've always been doing this. Like, StatsBomb was founded as a blog to help learn and help teach people about you know, analytics and football. Now we're doing it in two footballs. And we want to provide pathways for the next generation of talent. Uh, it's a good moment to note that there are lots of StatsBomb people here, including our recruitment people. If you are interested in a job currently or in the future, you might take a moment to go talk to them. Right, so StatsBomb in 2022. We have nearly 200 customers from Peru to Australia. I, I find that somewhat jaw-dropping. Um, we have 32 customers taking StatsBomb 360, which is great. We released it in March of uh, 2021, and we now have 32 teams and, and groups that are on that. It's not all teams. Like in some cases, it's some media. In some cases, it's, it's gambling. Um, but that's pretty exciting. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, we have 16 live customers. We just launched live last year in August, and, and again, we're seeing uptake in that space. In some cases, it's owners who want to see second-by-second -second updates of how the team's playing because they're not necessarily there, or they want, you know, sort of the analytical grounding so they can know how they feel after the game despite the result. Um, we have 16 teams collecting their academy games with us. Uh, actually, it's more than, but, and we have our first league-wide deal. So a pretty cool 2022 for us, 21-22, uh, you know how it is. SASBON 360, so if you don't know what SASBON 360 is, our marketing and our sales groups have failed completely, and you should come talk to me. <laughs> but um, it's contextual event data, and it's completely generated by computer vision. So you, know, you get more information about what's happening on the pitch for every event with this data. Uh, it produces advanced metrics like line breaking passes, ball receipts in space, degrees of pressure. There's a lot more. Uh, James York is in the room. You can talk to him. He's our, our director of football and, and oversees the IQ product about 360. Um, you guys have also made it known to us that you really want 360 in IQ and you want it to be accessible, as accessible as possible. You want all the metrics in there. That was kind of interesting to us because, you know, we produce new data and then oftentimes it takes us a while to understand it in order to produce it in the front end, which is Statsbomb IQ. Um, but it mirrors what happened in baseball. So in baseball, you know, we think of them as, as you know, 20 years ahead, and in some cases they are. They have this amazing high-tech camera work, they've got radar, they've got all sorts of things that track their data better than anybody else in the world. You've got stuff that's tracking spin rates in the thousands of rotations per second. But what's interesting is that in baseball, despite the fact that some of these places have, you know, 10, 20, 30 analytics people obviously on staff, and then back rooms that, that are, you know, sort of off the books that uh, are on the budget as well, they didn't always pick up on the new data. And, and so that's kind of a, an interesting point that you know, they, they also want tools. They want to see things. They want things to be made easier for them. And that's kind of a theme around StatsBomb. Like, if we can make your life easier and better, we will. IQ Live. So IQ Live, again, if you haven't heard about it, we've got demos in the back. Uh, it's real-time live match dashboard. Live data is much more tricky than, than sort of post-match data. It's much more fragile. Um, it's fully customizable on, on, on the live side for saved templates for fast and easy workflows on, on match day. It automatically updates the tables, the race charts, the pass maps, the shot maps, leaderboards, 3D freeze frames, which uh, you've probably seen on the, the social media. And it has the same expected goals model as our post-match 
data. So it's not entirely 100% the same data because it's harder to collect stuff in live and it's, it's a little more fragile, but it's the same modeling and, and we do produce much better numbers than, than, than our competitors, or at least so I've been told. Academy Match Collection. So this is an interesting one that I wanted to, to highlight because we've seen a, a pretty big upswell in this over the last sort of 18 months. It's something that when I was at Sloan on stage in 2016, I talked about two ideas that I thought were really intriguing sort of for the future of um, data collection and use of data in, in football slash soccer. Um, one of them was around collecting your practice uh, and, and sort of training data. We talk about practice, as it were. Um, and, and that one is something that incredibly the American teams that we've been talking to in, in American football have been encouraging us to do, partly because they want to see more reps. They want to see more data around their players than just games. And it's an even smaller sample size than, than football, which is you know, deeply frustrating if you're a data scientist. So if you can up the, the, the degree of uh, data and the sample size there, you can probably get a better idea of player development in practice. If you do it for your academy players in games, you get the same sort of concept. So like, you get much more information about player development. You're able to improve your projections on those players. You're able to improve your loan targeting on those players. You're also able to give them kind of individual development plans that you know, you're not arguing about. This isn't just what the coach thinks. This is the gap between you and the first team player. These are the things that you would need to work on in order to fit into our system and our scheme. So we're seeing an upswelling of that, and I think that's going to continue because one of the big things about academies is that they are much cheaper than going out into the transfer market. And not only are they cheaper, but you know who these players are. You know what their personality is like. We've all seen big transfers fail. And one of the reasons that those fail is because they don't have the right personality, or they didn't fit in with our group, or they were uncomfortable with the culture, or whatever. You know your academy kids. And so if you're able to ease the pathway for them, if you're able to give them better development pipelines, if you're able to find better targeted loans and better evaluate them for eventual potential transfers, you're going to have a much better situation. And this is like, you know, Moneyball 2.0-ish, somewhere around there. If Mark is in the room, he's always looking for Moneyball 2.x. This is, this is one of the, the stakes in the ground that you might put on the, your next update on the blog. We also have our first league deal. And this was interesting to us because the teams insisted. If you've seen my social media, you'll see me talking a little bit about how I think it's frustrating that the media and the leagues themselves continue to put out kind of the same companies that our teams have refused to use over and over again. Uh, we don't lose deals to our competitors. Like, you guys demand that you have better data, better quality information, better expected goals, better on-ball value models. Like, you, that is your jobs. Your butts are on the line when those transfers go out. We saw this with the teams. We don't always win the, the live deals. In fact, sometimes we don't even get talked to about that uh, for league-wide deals, but we can do them. But the teams insisted that we come in for league-wide event data because they love the product and they wanted that. They thought it was gonna make their lives better. So really excited about that. Thought that was a, a great kind of, I don't know, credit to, to our group as to what we've produced so far over the last few years. Brief mention of our consulting group. I killed this a couple of years ago, and clearly I was wrong. This is not the first time or the last time I will be wrong. You guys kept coming back to us and saying, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? We'd really like you to help out with our head coach search. Or, hey, we're looking for a defensive midfielder, and we've got this budget. Um, you know, plenty of you are looking for you know, customized R scripts or help with you know, your pipeline from StatsBomb and the API into Tableau, into Power BI. We're capable of doing all this stuff. Uh, we're also capable of evaluating teams, uh, evaluations, like looking at your squad and telling you where the weaknesses is. Uh, in some cases, you know, for new owners, we would look at it and say, hey, these contracts are liabilities and these ones are under market. You know, these are the things you want to be aware of in the first couple of years. Anyway, we do this and we've got a great team behind it. If you need us, let us know. Back to you guys. Far more interesting than StatsBomb. Um, it says StatsBomb in 2022, but really it's our customers in 2022. There were 17 men's champions. 17. That's crazy. There was one point at which like, I, was, I was shocked and amazed that we had 17 customers. 17 of you won your league. Three out of four UEFA Champions League semifinalists on the men's side were StatsBomb customers. But maybe more exciting is that three of the four UEFA Women's Champions League semifinalists were also StatsBomb customers. We had half of the quarterfinalists in the Europa League and with contracts that have been signed, we would now have, you know, I think maybe six or seven of those. We would have all of the Women's Champions League semifinalists. Things have happened over the summer, but this is just from last year. And finally, three of four League Two 
self-promoted teams and a league that we were told would never use data because it was too expensive or they wouldn't spend the time or it didn't work down there. We're StatsBomb customers. That's awesome. That is so exciting. This shit works in the playoffs and it works at every level. Although, to be fair, Toulouse decided to skip the playoffs, so Billy Bean's testament that my shit might not work in the playoffs. We don't know. It's an, it's an untested theory right now. Hopefully they don't get relegated and, and have to test that, but uh, it's, it's an interesting trope that, that remains in the industry nevertheless. I want to talk a little bit about some more you guys on the gentle side. I'm so proud of some of you. I've known some of you since you were teenagers and you started in this industry, and not only do you have real jobs, but like in certain cases you've helped one of the sleeping giants of Europe returned to the top of the, the league table in a big league. That's so exciting. Nothing to do with me, all to do with your own hard work. But I just wanted to tell you that like, in many cases, you're out there and I'm so proud of you because you know, when you started following the blog in 2013 or the podcasts or you know, just watching our work on, on this side, you guys have taken it and run with it in ways that we never expected. Uh, some of you are, are really good friends, and, and I'm so excited that we get to throw this every year so that you can come in the room and hang out with us. Some of you that are watching on the internet could not be here today, but again, keep it up. There's plenty of jobs for you out there. Like, we are just getting started. If you looked at recent stuff in baseball, uh, I think there were 37 analytics positions on one team. Like, there is a lot of space in the, the football, soccer world for growth here, and they will need a lot of people, multilingual, very smart people, to help out in the future. Women's football is something that has been a cornerstone for StatsBomb since we started. We have wanted to support this because it's the right thing, and we have. Uh, we now have 40 customers in women's football as part of the free agreements. We continue to add new competitions that we're covering all the time. This is something that is, is something we are super passionate about, and we go out of our way, and we spend a lot of resources and time in order to make sure that you know, women's football has access to the same tools that the men's. And in some cases I get really excited because the women's team takes our data and the men's team hasn't, and that feels great to me. I'm like, yes, all right, we're at least powering somebody smart in that group. Um, but yeah, so 10 of the teams also take worldwide data for women's for recruitment, which again is showing how things are changing. Uh, the, the sport is great, and it's great across both, both genders, and, and we have seen more passion around women's football in the last four to five years than ever before, and I think it's just getting started. It's also a great place to take your kids, which is sometimes quite different than you know, some of the men's side, but it's a good day out for the family. Right, good day out for the family, American football. <laughs> a little bit of tailgating here. Uh, we've got some American football uh, people in, in the group here uh, from StatsBomb. If you find them and you hear a funny American accent that's not mine, it might be them. It also might be Sam from Red Bull, you don't know. Uh, so yeah, we've got a data product we released in June. And for those of you who might have seen some of the StatsBomb underscore FB social stuff on our, on our Twitter, like we, it's really cool. It is a huge data spec. We've already got some teams on data and IQ in this place. Uh, we think that much like this football, that football uh, was in need of help and in need of better tools and in need of insight and in need of visualization. And we put a massive amount of data into this data spec. Soccer has about two times the data as our competitors in the base data. This has 10. It has low frequency tracking data inside of it. And we are just scratching the surface for what we're going to do with this product going forward. We also have gambling customers. Some of you aren't allowed to talk to them. That's very good. Separation of church and state, as it were. Um, but yeah, when we designed our data, we designed it to be the best data for gambling in the world. Uh, some of you are gambling sort of sports betting hedge funds. Uh, welcome. You show up every year. We're excited to see you. Uh, but we have our first operator deal starting this summer. And you probably don't know this, but player stats is the fastest growing sector for wagers in the sport. Uh, we have the best player stats not only in football, but also in football. Uh, so both in post-match and in live. And that's why we're seeing some uptake in there. It's exciting. Like, these are new things for us. But you guys want to know the new new, right? Like, that's 2022. Everybody wants to know what's coming next. We're going to release American football tracking in Q1. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work behind the scenes. It is an incredible amount of collection software work that we have to make sure that you know, we get the data right. And, and some of you want impossible things. Like you want the data to be perfect at all times. I understand that. 
it is not possible to do that, but we work on it, and you report problems, and we fix them. Uh, American football, we're doing the same sort of thing. We're going to release tracking data. And obviously, because we've got all this expertise in our computer vision and AI group that go across a space that's basically the same size, same size pitch, same size field, uh, we will gradually start to port some of, that, some of that technology and that learning back into soccer. So that's pretty exciting. Also, we're going to look at some new soccer event data. New event data. New. Different. Right. So. One of the problems with trying to create new event data is that we kind of ran to the end of the road in 2018 when we initially designed the data spec. And then we had some upgrades that we've done over time, like the freeze frames were always there, but the, um, the shot impact height was new, like pressures were there, but we've added like little improvements. But my thought is maybe there's a space for us to create something additional, but we need to talk to you about it because you guys know the holes in this space more than we do. We don't win titles, you do. We don't sit on the pitch these days, you do. And so if you've got spaces that you're like, hey, I would love to have this type of data in order to be able to analyze these types of things because it's clearly missing, you should come talk to us. We have the ability to do this. We also wanna to talk to you about the use cases for all your tracking data in analysis and recruitment. The more we understand about what you wanna use it for, the better we're able to design the data. We know that we create the best data in the space, but we need a better understanding of how you want to use the data in order to create the best metrics and the best tools on top of it. And the fundamental question for us as a business is how do we make your lives better? How do we improve your job and make your life easier in what you do? Because you have hard jobs. I still remember a couple years ago, I was talking to a team that was in the Europa League and their staff worked 72 of 75 consecutive days. That's insane. As StatsBomb, our job is to make your lives at least a little bit easier. We can't give you off days, but hopefully we make your day-to-day, -day, especially around data, a little bit easier and more fun. So as a data scientist, you're often at the mercy of weaknesses in the data. Like we literally built a data company based off of this. I hated the data holes that we had from our competitors. And I was like, well, someone has to be able to do better than this. And I looked around the world for people to partner with us and we didn't find anybody. So we did it ourselves. But we don't know everything. <laughs> like we, like especially now, we're pretty far away from, from the day to day. You guys know so much more. I just wanted to tell you that what's possible is only limited by imagination. You've seen what's in this football data spec. The American football data spec is incredible. It has so much stuff inside of it. It takes us so much longer to collect than it does in the soccer space. So maybe we can find some equivalents there. Maybe we can take a little more time, produce a new data spec that helps you guys in your day to day. Come talk to us. Help us help you. I can't think of another company in the industry that releases new products with the same velocity that we do. It's not just marketing, it's not vaporware, we release products. The data is accessible and available to you. Or the talk directly to you. We want you to guide our development. So just come have a chat. I'm here all day. Our team is here all day. This is a great spot to be in person. And if you've got great ideas, you know, my email is ted at statsbomb.com. You know, I'm available there too. Talk to us about it, uh, especially tracking. I think tracking is, is one of those spots that has not had so much public data, so it means that a lot of the development there hasn't been as fast as, as you might have seen elsewhere. Right, so some final things. Thank you to all of our speakers for their hard work. Uh, this, this conference wouldn't be here without it. We have some stats bomb people that have, have put in a lot of time on their stuff. The research stage is around the signs and up the way. It's gorgeous. There are really great talks in both sets of rooms this year. Also visit our sponsors in the back. They're back there dotted amongst the tables near and around the food. Also, also, there are StatsBomb booths around for customer success, for data science, and for recruitment. Uh, you know, talk to them. They're great people. They're fun. Uh, they're really happy to be here amongst you. And finally, have a great day. Like, that's the point of this. So I'm really happy that we're here. This is a great venue. I'm really happy that we've got such great people that are going to give cool talks. Like, I'm geeking out about some of these because I've seen some of the slides. Um, yeah, so thank you.